everybody. Hey, hopefully you guys can see us all right. What I've got is I've got Chris Record, and on probably your left, my right, we got Damian Coughlin, and over here, we've got Brian Dixon. And what we're gonna do is we are gonna do a Q&A answer session with you. This is where you can basically ask us questions related to Shopify, related to Facebook advertising, related to the 90 day challenge, related to e-com, and we're gonna answer them live, okay? So we've got about a 45 minute window right now. We've, at the top of the hour, we've gotta end hard because we've gotta jump on a plane and uh, continue our traveling. So, but we wanted to come with you. Even on a holiday weekend, we're here to serve you. So in the comments on the Facebook Live, can you let us know um, if the video is coming in clear? And then also I'm gonna share my screen, but let us know if the video is coming in clear and, uh, and, and what it looks like. And then all you've gotta do is ask your questions. Start building up your questions right now and we will go ahead and we will answer them. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, so as you can see, um, right now we're hanging out here. We're actually getting ready to eat some lunch really quick. We got 45 minutes. So, um, Damien, why don't you come in and real quickly take, while people are asking questions, why don't you take one, like 60 seconds and introduce yourself, who you are, and kind of what you've done in the e-commerce space, and then, and then you do the same. Cool. Hey guys, hope you're all having a great day. My name is Damien Coughlin, and I've been an entrepreneur now for six months. Um, originally born and raised in Ireland, I moved to the States and I got a corporate job uh, working in Silicon Valley. Um, I, learned, I took the skills I've learned there and now I've applied it to e-commerce and specifically Shopify because Shopify is the number one e-commerce platform. And um, I synced up with Chris Record, Lawrence Aponte and other entrepreneurs here in Phoenix, Arizona. And um, you know, to date, I uh, have managed to scale my business from a brand new person from zero dollars to we're estimating about 500,000 by the end of the month. So, you know, it's been a lot of hard work, a lot of mentorship. And the reason why I love this group and I love this challenge is that it's a community of people that are inspired and that are, are pushing for the same goal of building, growing and scaling our businesses through $100, through $1,000 and through $10,000. So I'm super excited to be on this live right now, so yeah, that's what awesome. Awesome, let's hand over to Brian. Awesome guys, so um, if you don't know me, my name is Brian Dixon, I've been in this space for about three years now. Um, I'm a Facebook marketing expert, so that's what I specialize in. You guys have any questions related to Facebook ads, I'm your guy, I've been, uh, you know, I started this whole gig wanting just the ability to travel the world and live that laptop lifestyle I've now generated um, well over one point one and a half million dollars uh, in affiliate marketing you know with Facebook advertising while traveling the world full time so that was my dream and here I am now with these guys and I'm here for you awesome so we've been traveling these last few days um, we're actually in Salt Lake City Utah um, tonight we'll be in Scottsdale Arizona tomorrow we will be in San Diego California and then following that we'll be at a five-day event at the Techidomic, Techidomic's headquarters all week. So you guys, we're excited and fired up, but we have to end at the top of the hour. So ask your questions. If you are watching live, one of the benefits of watching live is that you get the ability to be able to ask questions to us, okay, even on a weekend. So ask your questions, Damien's monitoring them, and let's just kind of go from there. Yeah, so guys, first question, and I guess it's, it's more of a question for you, Chris. Um, you know, you mentioned before about the tech, tech and branding. Uh, people are asking, where can they buy apparel? So hats and t-shirts. Where can you buy Techademics apparel? Our store is, um, you know, pretty much almost launched. And uh, we've just been running full steam ahead. Haven't had somebody to manage that. So stay tuned. I'll make an announcement within the next week. But we've got an entire store filled with all kinds of apparel. And uh, we're excited about it. So stay tuned. We'll let you know how to shop on the store. Yeah, so the next question is from Emilio. Thank you so much for your question. She's asking, what is the best way to give an ad a good momentum? For instance, at what dollar or stats should you change your objective? Okay, so you've started a Facebook ad. You wanna know how long to continue it before you know whether or not it's a, you're gonna pause it or you're gonna scale it. And then how long until maybe you should choose your objective. For example, maybe you're starting out trying to boost a post and get a little bit of engagement, but then you wanna go into maybe a website conversion ad to start converting. You wanna know basically how long until you make that change and you also wanna know, um, you know what to look for in that. So why don't we each take a second and give some uh, feedback. Mm -hmm. For me, the Chris Record School of Business, I like to run both a page post engagement ad and a website conversion ad at the same time. I like to give my post a little bit of social proof with page post engagement, but I also wanna make sales. And the best way to make sales is website conversion ads. It's what Facebook wants us to post to make sales. So I like to run my ads for at least three days 
And then I like to, even if I'm kind of losing money, I'm gonna give them maybe a few days because sometimes Facebook doesn't really figure it out until day three. So that's what I look for. And then if the ad is converting well, then I don't scale the page post engagement ad, but I do scale the website conversion ad. I keep figuring out ways to, to drive more of those and expand. So why don't you guys jump in and share some of your thoughts? Yeah, Gus, so my train of thought is the same thing, right? I want Facebook to kickstart the algorithm as soon as possible. And the best way to do that, guys, is get your PPE going, right? They are the people who are more likely to engage, like, and share. And that's going to give you an indication on how well your product to customer matches, which is very important in your ability to scale your campaigns going forward. As Chris mentioned, WC, website conversion, purchase, and add to cart are the best way to engage and get that going forward into a sales funnel. Okay guys, it's all about that sales funnel. So uh, view content, um, add to cart, initiate checkout and purchase, right? So guys, again, uh, use, use website conversion in conjunction with your PPE and you know, give it time guys. Uh, and there's another thing to remember, weekend traffic is different to weekday traffic. So guys, your stats are gonna be up and down. So it's all about analyzing our data become an efficient marketer, not only in your product, but in analyzing Facebook ads. So give it time, guys, and you know, be patient, and collect that data, build that pixel, and uh, grow, grow, grow on scale. Awesome, you got any feedback you want to jump in? Awesome, yeah, so just as Damien said, the one, one big thing that I um, focus on is website conversions and building that pixel. So um, I agree with everything they just said on the PPE ads completely and on the website conversion. If you're just you know, starting to run those conversion ads, I would run a view content ad first, build that pixel up, get the people driving to that page, and then once you have uh, that pixel, um, you know, have some info on that pixel, I would then switch to a purchase uh, conversion instead of the view content, but that's once you build that pixel. I would give that pixel at least you know one to two weeks of solid data running ads to it. And as Chris said, I let my I let my ads run for about three days before I make the decision because it sometimes it does take Facebook you know that that t amount of time to to ramp up and get you that result you're looking for. Awesome. Let's keep the questions coming. Yeah. So we have another question here from Derek Burton. Thank you so much for the question. Is it a good idea to sell a high ticket item in your general store? And that's a great question, guys. And you know, two metrics that I firmly believe in in e-commerce and two important metrics that you have to understand is number one, the average order value, and number two, the lifetime customer value. Now, the reason why these two metrics are so important for you is because, you know, the more, the more, the more revenue that we're getting from each sale, the more um, we have available to us to spend on ads and spend on scaling and growing our email list and, and our brand, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. So Derek is asking high ticket. High ticket, guys, is those um, high-end products, right? That are costing maybe over $70, $80, over $100. Now, Chris has mentioned before, guys, and this is a key, key factor. People have to know you, like you, and trust you in order to build that relationship in handing over your, their credit card to you, right? So what I recommend, guys, is starting off with basics. This is a, this is a, this is a, this is a structured journey, right? I want you guys selling you know, basic stuff around $20, $30, building that, building that email list. And then over time, we're gonna convert these loyal customers into a high ticket strategy. So guys, remember, it's all about getting the customer in the door and making that first purchase. Because as we get those first purchase, we're gonna nurture them along through systems like MailChimp, etc. Awesome, so when it comes to the price range of the products that you're selling on your store, if you're a brand new beginner, I would suggest finding products for less than $10, okay? Just it re reduce your risk, okay? Because you're dealing with um, drop shippers, you're dealing with um, wholesalers out in places like China. You are gonna have to send them some money, right? So since you're gonna have to send the money, the smaller amount, the better. And then you kind of up it to $20, $30, um, thanks. Uh, $20, $30, $40, $50. Now I see a lot of you trying to sell products for like $100, $200, $500. Well, if you're drop shipping those products, I want you to keep something into consideration here, which is number one, you're gonna be collecting $500, then you're gonna send $500 to somebody in China and hope that that product gets delivered through customs properly 
hope that that product gets delivered without any damage. And then if there is damage, you are the one, your store is the one taking that risk. So what I like to do is I like to minimize risk by dealing with smaller, inexpensive products. You can still make good margin. Think about selling in cheap, low price points and selling bulk amounts of them rather than selling high price points. Don't mess around with high price points until you understand how to sell online, that you're good with Facebook ads, you understand this business, but get your feet wet with smaller, inexpensive products, okay? Even if you see something great, like, oh, this is a perfect product, it's $400 from some outsourcer. I personally don't even bother with taking the risk. That's my thoughts, that's my strategy. Excellent, excellent. Cool, so cool. we, uh, Brian, have you got anything else to add? Or? You guys keep looking for questions yeah. in the background if there's anything. So I have another question got, uh, from someone asking about, you know, uh, on their site, um, you know, whether putting their personal information is a good idea. No, guys, I recommend, you know, since, since we're, we're treating this like a legitimate business, which you should be, uh, you know, I recommend you guys buying a P.O. box within your local area. So for me, um, I'm based here in Phoenix, Arizona, so I just went down to the local post office and got myself a P.O. box. That, therefore, I'm able to put that onto my website, and I'm also able to... Uh, send any returns back to that address rather than my own personal address. Okay, guys, that's one to remember. Um, so Diane is asking, who is the other gentleman? The other gentleman is a guy called Brian Dixon, uh, and Brian is a wealth of experience in uh, internet, internet marketing and Facebook ads and driving traffic. Yep. Okay, so we have another question here from Mustafa. Uh, when you switch between conversion pixels, do you edit the ad set then change the pixel, or do you create a new one. So when I have a converting ad set, um, I don't touch it at all. I leave it. If I want to scale up or if I want to change the pixel, I duplicate that ad set out and then I change the pixel that way. I never touch a, a, a ad set that's performing and that's generating um, you the results that you're looking for. And there's a reason why you don't want to touch existing ad sets. is because when you edit one of your ads, you're actually starting over Facebook's optimization of that ad. So what happens is Facebook starts building on that ad and they start getting it after a few days. Any edits or any changes that you resubmit, it's like starting that ad over. So if you have a high converting ad, the best practice is just to leave it, okay? Now, there will be some advice you hear out there that will say make small incremental budget increases. What they mean is that you know if you have a $5 a day ad, then you might wanna make small incremental budget increases. But here's the thing. Here's my, here's my, I've tried that, okay, and I've done both. Here's what I have found to be more effective. A small budget increase that they're recommending is about 10% in a budget increase that doesn't throw off Facebook that much. That's even what my ad rep tells me to do. But I told my ad rep, I said, well, if I'm placing a little $5 a day ad and I increase it 10%, that's only 50 cents. Now I'm up to $5.50 or $6 per day. That's barely, just an extra dollar a day of spending. What I, I say, my method is I'll just clone that ad straight up and maybe change one or two small things, now I've got another $5 a day ad. I've just increased my budget by 100% and that $5 a day ad performs great. And my ads rep says, oh yeah, you could do it that way too. That actually makes a lot of sense. So see, a lot of people out there are gonna say make small budget increases. Here's what I've personally found that works, is what Brian just said. When you have an ad that's performing, leave it. Go in and duplicate it. Go into Power Editor, check the box next to that campaign level and duplicate it and create a new campaign with a new um, $5 a day ad spend and duplicate it. You can actually do an exact duplicate and believe it or not, that will work. But what works, works even better is that if each duplicate has a slightly different audience or maybe a slightly different age range or maybe one is targeting men, one is targeting women. So let's say you have a, an ad that's performing um, and it's just tailoring everybody 18 and above, men and women. Duplicate it, do another ad $5 a day just targeting men and duplicate another one just targeting women. That's an example. Now you're spending $15 a day instead of $5 a day, but you've left that original ad untouched. You can do the same thing targeting different countries. You can do the same thing um, adding different audiences, drilling down, you name it. Um, you got more thoughts on this as well, Damon? Yeah, that, that's a super, super important um, point Chris is making, guys. When I first started off um, six months ago, I was changing my ad sets. I was changing my ads and that is a no-no, guys. As Chris mentioned, the only thing you really should be doing is changing the budget slightly, right? Because as Chris says, Facebook works on that optimization, right? So every time you are making a change, you're, tr you're telling Facebook to do something with the parameters that you have given them, okay? So duplicate the ad set, right? The initial cost, the initial cost of the duplicated ad set will be high, but over time it's gonna come down. Your cost per click is gonna come down. Your cost per purchase is gonna come down. So give it time to optimize, guys, right? But I do recommend duplicating.
Awesome. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to jump into the Facebook group right now, and um, we're going to show you guys some of the questions as they come up here in the Facebook 90-day challenge. And then what we're going to do is we're going to jump off the camera right now because we have a few people telling us that the bandwidth isn't that good right now. So we're going to jump into uh, the Facebook group, and we're literally going to do live Q&A with you guys for another half an hour, okay? So right now, if you're in the Facebook group and you're watching this live, this is your exclusive opportunity to be able to ask questions, okay? So let me go ahead and switch it over to the uh, live screen. Let's do, boom, there we go. You guys should be able to see now. Um, you can see the latency even on the, the camera is actually so low here that it's hard to even come up. But we can actually see your questions and your answers. So we're gonna go ahead and keep asking questions now. And you won't be able to see us, but you will be able to hear us. Yes, so Laura, Laura Gallagher is asking a good question. Um, she's struggling to analyze ads properly. What are the main metric heading we should have in our ads manager and learn to read from, if that makes sense? So for, I'm gonna answer that and I'm also gonna post the metrics that you need to be looking at, right? So here are the metrics you should be looking at, right? Number one is reach. Reach is how much has your ad set been shown to? Number two is frequency. What is the average number of times your ad has been shown to the same customer? You want the frequency down to be about 1, 1 1.0, 1.1, 1.2. Anything higher, that means that your ad has been shown to the same person. That's going to leave an increase in your ad cost. The second one is CPM. CPM is cost per thousand. So how much is it costing you to show your ad to a thousand people? The second thing is cost per click, link click. This is basically the cost it is to you if I go and click on your link that sends me to your Shopify store. The cost per purchase is how much do I have to spend or how much have I spent to make that purchase conversion on ads, okay? The next one is um, website conversion purchase. So this is gonna be the total revenue you have gotten from that sale. Okay, can, let's, let's repeat them starting from the top okay, and I'll so, write them down here. So reach. Um, we, we can explain them later, but okay. let's, let's go to reaches. Um, so but then we have frequency, um, CPC, link click, in brackets, link click. Okay. Link click. Um, CPM. Uh, CPM is cost per thousand. So, yeah. Um, next is cost per purchase. Next one's purchase conversion. Um, relevant score and add to cart purchase and view content now they're they're, they're not in the you you, you you can arrange them in, in in whatever way you want but guys they are typically and, the and, ones. and what was this answering like with this so 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 someone asked the question is she's having a hard time analyzing her data so guys these are the these are the these are the um, columns you need to be looking at because these will give you an indication on a high versus poor performing ad. Um, and you know, over time guys, remember this is a journey, right? So we're gonna be able to show you down the line how, how and why these are so crucial to you deciding whether to uh, shut off an ad or scale an ad, okay? Reach frequency, CPM. Okay, so this, we're gonna leave this up for a second. Yeah. Okay, so the answer, here is Damien's top 10 metrics that he looks at in his reporting. Okay. And it might change. I'm just kind yeah, of that's off, in here. That's off the top of my head, guys. Off the, that's, that's just like off the top of his head. Okay. So um, why don't you go in real quick, Damien, and why don't you explain each one of these again, just for people that are watching. You guys take notes. Um, sometimes we want to throw in some intermediate and advanced content for people that are maybe making some progress. If you're a beginner, you'll be able to come back and reference this. So Damien, Damien why don't you jump in and explain each one of these again okay. now they have it up on yeah. the screen. So guys, as we all know, there's three parts to an ad. There's campaign, there's ad set, and there's the ad. Now guys, at the ad set is how we analyze basically each individual you know, ad set, whether it's you know, targeted to um, brands, whether it's targeted to web, uh, magazines, etc, etc. Now, as over time, when you're basically running your ads, your, face, your Facebook is going gonna, is gonna to send more and more people to that ad set. So your reach is going to tell you how many people, how many impressions has your ad been given. So say, for example, on day one, 
you may you may reach you know a thousand people okay so the reach is going to tell you you know exactly how many people are coming to that ad set right that that product now the frequency guys is the average number of times that you have shown the same ad to the same person now the reason why frequency is important guys is because um, if Facebook shows if, if 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 Facebook sees that your ad has been shown to the same person right it's gonna start you know increasing your cost right not only that but people are kind of going to, there's gonna be a thing called um, banner blindness banner blindness is when people start ignoring your ads right and when people ignore your ads Facebook is gonna look upon that negatively right so what I recommend guys to reduce your frequency is to duplicate the ad set and if you're doing flex targeting guys which is intersecting audiences I remove I would remove one level of flex so say for example your ad set which has a high frequency say that said the audience size is a hundred thousand people you may have had a reach of 60,000 people on that 100,000 audience. So duplicate the audience size, guys, and remove a level of flex or expand your audience. So maybe maybe you're running to women only. I want you guys to run to men only. Maybe you're in the US. I want you to go to Canada, Australia, okay? So cost per click link, guys. Cost per click is basically on everyone's ad, right? We have a, we have a hyperlink which goes to our website, right? When someone clicks on that link, you're being charged, okay? So um, basically you want that, I usually aim for 50 cents or less because I'm all about volume, right? I want, I want it to cost me less to send more people to my website. So guys, do not, do not have a high cost per click, right? Because that's, that's going to that's gonna impact your, your, your cost per purchase, right? Uh, the next one is CPM, the cost per thousand. How much is it costing me, guys, to reach a thousand people? Okay, how much is it costing me to reach a thousand people? And guys, I typically aim for ten dollars or less. Um, you know, on video, on video ads, I can get really, really cheap uh, CPM and cost per click. So, guys, remember, it's all about experimenting, and you've got to be willing to put the time in to figure out what works best for your niche, etc. Right? Cost per purchase, guys. Uh, I think this is a straightforward one. Um, you know, how much did you spend on ad to obtain that purchase conversion? All right, purchase conversion is. It's just gonna show you the total revenue generated from that purchase, okay? You may have 10 purchases on that ad set. Each, each, each sale was $50, that's a $500 purchase conversion. Relevant score, so the relevant score is basically telling you, you know, how relevant your product to customer match is. I aim for nine or 10, anything below that, that means that you are not accurately targeting the product to your customer. Um, add to cart is basically how many add to carts your product has received. If you have a high add to cart and a low purchase, that means that basically people love your product, but when they get to the checkout page, they have an issue with, 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 with shipping or they have an issue with the branding that you have associated with that checkout page. So guys, it's all about improving your, your website, not just your product. The purchase obviously is the number of purchases, guys. Uh, you can do this through the, through the Facebook pixel. Um, make sure you install it correctly. You can install it through the, the Pixel Helper, which is on the Google Chrome extension. The view content is just another view content. Um, how many people have viewed the content but not have yet to go along the sales funnel? Awesome. Damien, thanks for sharing that. I love it, man. Damien just gave you guys a nice like, little <laughs> overview of all of his data, his reporting. He did that off the top of his head. If you guys appreciate that, um, show Damien some love. Say thanks, Damien. Uh, in the comments, because um, he did that while while having a full plate of food in front of him, not even <laughs> not even touching his food. Okay, six um, four hours, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's go to this question here. Cool. Vivian says, and I'll have uh, Brian jump in on this. Vivian says, we have been told to start with a general store. Hold on, these things are co these comments are getting in the way. Okay, we have been told to start with a general store. Now I understand that the pixel gets all mixed up if you're promoting different niches in your store. What do you say about this? Now, I've got some thoughts, but uh, why don't we just all three chime in, kind of what's our thoughts about, real quick, we tell people to start with a general store because when you're new, you don't even necessarily know what niche is gonna sell well. It's better to go general, and each one of your categories could be like a different niche, and then you'll figure out what's selling from there. But what they're saying is, well, then their pixel's gonna be messed up. What They might have 10 people over here buying animal products, they might have 10 people over here buying motorcycle products, they might have 10 people over here buying nursing products, it's messing up their, their um, pixel. Why don't we all chime in with, with some of our thoughts there? 
Well, if they're making sales, then I don't think you're going to have much of an issue with your pixels. So, I mean, that's one thing. But, I, I mean, starting off, you want to keep this simple. You don't want to overcomplicate it, guys. I would. I mean, if you're starting off, you know, new, keep it simple. You know, that general story. You know, test a bunch of different products and different niches. Find what works. Just use that one pixel starting off. You don't need to go starting multiple ad accounts, creating, like, more and more headaches for you. I've been running one single ad account for myself for the past three years, you know, in, in multiple opportunities, running multiple different offers. And it still converts and it works well because it's still the same account that I use. So I personally recommend just keep it simple. You don't want to overcomplicate things here, especially when you're starting off. Um, and just keep that same pixel and use that one pixel until, you know, you can find a product that, you know, really takes off. And maybe you want to then build a store just around that niche. And then you can go open another account and create a pixel for it just for that store specifically. But starting off, I just say, you know, keep that one pixel. Yeah, I agree totally, guys. Um, <laughs> You know what Brian says is, is, is super smart, you know. Um, we do not want to overcomplicate the process in the initial stages of our e-commerce e journey. I'm six months in the game and I'm, and I'm targeting multiple different niches with the same pixel. So guys, it works. Um, you know, just use the standard pixel and over time as we become more confident and we figure out based on our general store what exactly is working, we can start with tools like you know, there's a tool called Trackify, which Thomas Barkey uh, uh, runs, and Trackify allows you to create custom conversions. But again, guys, I don't want to overwhelm you guys. You know, right now, start with a basic pixel, and as 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 we scale and grow this business, we can we can look into the other opportunities to really really focus on on individual niches. Awesome. Okay. Um, Debbie says, so after we get your engagement with a page post engagement ad, we leave it running and start a conversion ad with the same audience. Um, yeah, I mean, there's a two different, those are two totally different things. Page post engagement is what you do to get a lot of likes, shares, and comments on your post. Conversion ads are what you do to tell Facebook, um, track you know, people that click the link and go take an action of some kind, what they call an event. Like they go view your content, they go add a product to, your car, to a shopping cart, or they go make a purchase. They're two different ads. You can hit them with the same audience, that's fine, but usually what I do is my page post engagement audience is big. I'll do this one in the audience range of like one to five million, and then um, a website conversion ad I'll do in an audience range of like 200,000, 800,000. So my website conversion ad is gonna be to a more laser targeted audience. My page post engagement uh, ad is gonna be to a more broad audience. Um, international sellers training coming soon. We've been working with a company to help set all that up. Um, so we're going there. Um, I just started a, cam a new campaign this morning, 10 hours ago, but I see the amount spent is, hi is higher than reach. Um, you know, I wouldn't be able, that's too early. Oh, wait, I just, I just read. Uh, yeah, yeah. They're coming in so quick. Sorry. They're coming in so quick, all right. Um, that wasn't supposed to, and there's no clicks on my link. I used conversion with purchase. Now that's gonna be a little tough to answer without seeing it. Mustafa, you're gonna probably wanna do a screenshot, ask it in their own question. Sophia, is it normal that my cost per website purchase is higher on my duplicated ad frequency 1.5 um, yeah. duplicated for ten dollars still getting sales now I guess Sophia to follow up on that question it all depends on what your original ad was if it's an exact duplicate was your original ad a ten dollar a day ad um, that would make a difference if you went from a five dollar a day ad to a ten dollar a day ad you're gonna notice difference uh, in that now yes a duplicate ad does not mean you're gonna get duplicate results um, for example in my page post engagement ads I'll often get better results from my duplicated ads than from the original, what I call the master ad. I'll create one master ad and then maybe what I'll do is I'll create several duplicate ads. I often get better results from my duplicate ads than from the master ad. Now, that being said, it's very, very different with website conversions. So yes, you should expect different costs, but you're saying duplicated for 10. Right off the bat, if, you're if, if you've got an ad performing at five and you're duplicating to 10, you will see different results. Okay, let's keep going. <clears throat> Okay, can you please clarify whether a new pixel needs to be used per product or per category? Okay, here's very clear clarification, everybody. One pixel per store, okay? Keep it simple. One pixel per store. In a general store, you're gonna use one pixel, okay? Um, yeah, why don't we all chime in here? with, uh, what do we, well, let's all chime in on some of our favorites for ad type, okay? Um, if you wanna sell a product, yep. you, can, you can do a link ad, you could do a picture ad, 
You could do a video ad. You could do a carousel ad. There's uh -huh. a lot of choices. There is the, the first answer is um, which is the best? All Kenneth, there's no best, okay? Yeah. Every product could be sold a different way, but there is no best kind of ad to use, Kenneth. But um, why don't we all share maybe maybe one or two of our favorite types of ads which we've noticed convert? Okay. I'll start with you, Damien. Okay. So, guys, as Chris mentioned, guys, you've got to be willing to test what works for you. There's no, there's no answer to that, right? So, right now, guys, what's working in the industry for me is video website conversion ads. Now, guys, so... As we all know, Facebook is all about, they're in a battle war right now for, for, for content, right? So what they're doing is they are, they are basically allowing or they're showing uh, content which is video based to their audience because it's higher engagement. So you see a lot of Facebook lives get priority over photo posts. So what I do guys is I run these slideshow. So it's, it's a website conversion video, but you can select 10 static images so it looks like a video then you can apply some some background music to it and it's usually about a 10 second video and it's super engaged right super engaging you can add the link to it or you can add the shop now down to the bottom right hand corner so video video website conversion ads are super super powerful right now um, I also run WC 1200 by 1200 um, photo post ads and 1200 by 1650 1650 is a new ad creative that Facebook came out with a month ago, right? And what, what, what 1200 by 1650 website conversion post ad allows you to do, anyone with a big phone or big, um, you know, whatever they're working on, right? They're able to look at your ad in a, in a more clearer and highly, highly because there's more, there's more space on that ad, right? So they work well as well, 1200 by 1650. So they're my two, they're my go-to um, types right now and um, yeah. awesome I'll jump in this is Chris my favorite go-to type of ad to place in general is video ads I'm a huge fan of video ads what I like is if you have a product that is unique and super cool and if you can find a video I especially like square videos on Instagram so if you can find like let's say um, a product we recently sold was a magnetic car charger that your phone can basically twirl around on it 360 degrees. You put it right in the vent of your car. And what it does is your phone just magnetically just sticks right on it. So when you get in your phone, when you get in your car, everybody has a phone. There's nowhere to put your phone, right? Well, all you do is you just basically just go and quickly slap it right there on the vent. And that, that's a product that doesn't sell as well ver via a picture because a picture doesn't do it justice, but it sells very well via a video. Same kind of thing with a... Um, with a phone, um, a phone charging system, there are wireless phone charging systems, these little phone charging pads, where you can literally just slap your phone down on it and it'll start charging your phone. Th these kind of things are um, very, very powerful to show via video, okay? There's another one that's like a magnetic phone cable. So instead of like in the dark trying to plug your phone into a phone charging cable, there's a little magnetic piece you can add on it. Again, these things show better via video. So if you have a product that can show really well via video, somebody has probably already made a video. I like finding a square video or an HD video and I'll turn it into a square with um, a big black bar on the top and bottom with some text on it, kind of like a video meme and I'll use video ads. Those are my favorite. Um, I notice a lot of engagement on those ads. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Brian here. And um, just like these guys said, I mean, video is obviously uh, – is something that's very prominent right now. Facebook is favoring it. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, Facebook is, uh, is favoring it right now. I don't really have much to add to that. I think just you know, moving in the direction of creating those carousel type ads, which I've just recently started doing as well. I'm um, with the 10 photos that Damon was talking about. Those work very well. And, and just as Chris said, the video ads on, on Instagram and Facebook. Again, just showcasing the product, being able to you know, show, it, uh, show it off greater than you would be able to with a picture ad. And as I said, Facebook is currently, you know, they're, they're, they're uh, putting emphasis on video ads. Absolutely, video ads are powerful. Yeah. Michael says, abandonment car protector, I have not been able to find it on Shopify. Okay, Michael, let's do this right here. Go to, go let's see, let's see, Google, and I'm just gonna type in abandonment cart protector Shopify. Okay, abandonment cart protector, there it is. First link, right there. That's it. So look for it. It's got the red shopping cart on it, Abandonment Protector by Chili Apps. And this basically um, is the one you're looking for right here, okay? So hopefully that was helpful. 
Okay, uh, thanks, Tim. Hey, thanks, Tim. Damn. <laughs> thanks, for Christopher. Thanks, Tim. Thanks, Tim. Um, okay, you guys, we've got maybe one more question. Um, let's see. Okay. Umesh says, um, I started a niche store as my first store and having a hard time selling products. Shall I stop this for a second and start general store or improve this? Umesh. Don't stop anything. You don't need to start. You don't need to have multiple stores going. Um, if you have a niche store, you can just have um, have categories in there. You know, like a good example is this. Watch. I'm going to show you guys a niche store. Okay. Here's a niche store right here on Shopify. Phonebb.com. Okay. Phonebb. Clearly, it's all about phones, right? Phonebb.com. Look what they did. In a drop down menu right here, they have categories. Look at this. Kitchen and household. Health and beauty, pet accessories, car accessories. Listen, what do pet accessories have to do with phones? What do kitchen and household, let's go to kitchen and household category. Okay, look, it's a niche store, all about phones, but here we are looking, look, assorted mop slippers, okay? These are those slippers you put on your feet to mop your floor in your kitchen. What do those have to do with phones? Nothing. Look, forks, knives, and spoon cutlery set, okay? So clearly, there is a way to do it. Yeah. Don't, don't create multiple stores. If you want to do it, my advice is there's a video in the group that shows how to make drop down menus and you can Google this, Shopify drop down menus and just create multiple categories inside of your niche store. That should be fine. Mm -hmm. this, that site actually get a lot of, we, we can show people the traffic that's getting if you want. Yeah, what's Put the, the similar let's web. Go. Okay. You guys want to see, um, Damien wants to give you a quick little. Um, Similarweb.com. Oops, yeah, sorry. So basically guys, I'm going to prove to you now um, why exactly there is no point in like, like it doesn't matter guys, your story, like, just stick with one store guys, okay, let's put in this, phonebb.com. It's going a little slow. Okay, you guys, real quick, here's a quick little bonus session for our last five minutes right here. Damien is going to show you real quick, um, there's a site called SimilarWeb. If you guys find a, a Shopify store, you can plug it in you and you can see how well they're doing. Okay. And you can model after them. Go for it, Damien. Guys, look at this. So in March 2017, they had 2.6 million visitors. Guys, so this, this, this is incredible. Like this store, this store, I'm not gonna even guess the revenue that they're generating, but, but this is crazy, right? This is not seen like millions, millions and millions of dollars, guys, right? Because it's all about traffic, right? They're focused on, they're fo focused on high perceived value, right? High perceived value products that people need, right? And if you think about it, guys, right? These are, these, are phone, these are phone cases, right? So they apply to a huge, huge audience. So because they've got such powerful pixels, et cetera, they're able to like just scale so fast and, and grow so quickly. Like you can see here, 40% of the traffic that uh, is on iPhone BB is coming from the States. Then 13% from United Kingdom and 10% from Germany, et cetera, right? So guys, if you ever wanna analyze your data, you can come in here, right? You can see referrals, okay. Where are they getting the referrals from? Destinations. Uh, this is a this is a really good site, guys, for you. Okay. Oh, the screen's not. It's not showing the Chrome screen right now. Oh, it's not showing. Oh, never mind. Sorry, it is. Yep. It's okay. That's Keep good. So, guys, again, right? So, so don't don't be a you know if you're not selling, guys, you know, just it's all it's the product, right? I want you guys to focus on unique products, okay? And uh, you know, when I'm showing you the stats here, it's a testament that you know. The store that Chris just pulled up that I randomly actually knew as well. I knew the store for, for, for random reasons. But, um, you know, guys, it's a simple site. Look at it. Simple logo. Simple, very clean, very look, very clean background, guys. And what I like about it is it's, it's visually, visually nice to me, you know. And it's got all different random types of products. But the, pro the thing is, guys, they're finding unique products that people love, right? They're like, oh, my God, I could use that. And they're scalable products then, right? So... Okay, final question. You guys, choose a final question. <clears throat> we got to go jump on a flight, everybody. So I'll just chime in here quickly. I see a lot of questions on, on, on just ads on when to switch the ad off, when do you know if it's working, guys. Um, I, I can't... I can't stress enough that, you know, even for myself and Chris and us, like we constantly test. We're testing, testing, testing to see what works with $5 ad sets. So, I mean, you can't test enough. I mean, make sure that, you know, you are, you know, driving, make sure your pixel set up properly. I see a lot of questions with pixels and they're not tracking. Make sure your pixel is set up properly and then test. I mean, just test in your niche to keep trying different ad sets that convert. I mean, if, you're, if you, if, you know, you're trying a, a, a niche, you know, over and over and you're not getting the sales, maybe your product isn't right and you have to, you know, maybe go look at a different product in that niche and it's just not selling. 
But I can't stress enough, guys. I just test. I always test. I'm, I don't get attached to, to one or two or three different results. I just test until I get something that works. And then, you know, I just keep, and then I scale up. So that, I just want to chime in with that, guys. I see tons of questions just on ads, on, on, on uh, um, just on results and when you shut them off. So, guys, just keep testing. Awesome. Hey, you guys, we've reached the, uh, the top of the hour. We've got to jump on a plane. We're coming to you every day, even during the holidays, because that's how much we care and want to serve you. You guys just got a chance to hear from um, people who manage you know, six figures in revenue from their Facebook ads accounts. So it's been a very valuable session. We will do more Q&A sessions as we go along during this journey with everybody. And congratulations to all of you that have reached the milestones of $100, $1,000, and $10,000 with your store. This is just the beginning. If you guys enjoyed this Q&A session, let us know in the comments and we'll do more of them. And also, if you enjoyed Brian Dixon and Damian Coughlin helping, make sure to give them a shout out as well. We look forward to seeing you guys on the next 90 Day Challenge.